work primarily for the ARM program within DOE, which stands for Atmospheric Radiation Measurement. Overall, we're more looking at developing climate forecasts, especially in areas that are changing really rapidly, uh, like the Arctic. The climate there is exaggerated and changes more rapidly, so it's more useful data for uh, modelers. It's more obvious on what's happening. Summer to fall happens a lot faster. Everything's more accelerated. We operate the tethered balloon in conjunction with unmanned aircraft. And the unmanned aircraft have the advantage of being able to take a lot of spatially diverse measurements, but they have a very limited flight time compared to the balloon, and they can really only measure at one point within the atmosphere, whereas the balloon can stay aloft for days at a time and can measure continuously everywhere between the balloon and the surface, but we're really only measuring wherever the balloon is tethered. But when we operate from a ship, we can measure wherever we want as long as we're over water and we knew we wanted to work on figuring out a way to integrate ship operations, but the boat operational period in the Arctic is very, very short. It's only from July to September, so we had to look at other places. Maybe we could look at doing balloon flights from a ship. Uh, so we found a vessel that was exactly what we wanted in Louisiana. The Louisiana trip was basically to prove the capability of us being able to fly a tethered balloon on a boat. One of the big things that we learned from the Louisiana test is basically how to configure our equipment for the ocean. Having a two hour boat ride out to be able to even get into the spot where you're flying, where you have your waivers and stuff, you know, it takes a toll on your day, it makes your day that much longer boats float around, so it's a lot harder to stay within a GPS range. There's the rocking characteristics of the boat. You know, it's a little harder to keep your balance. The winds on coasts tend to be higher, so that's another challenge. We're always limited by how high the winds can be for us to be able to fly. But we learned a lot from it, collected data, and was able to analyze it and see how effective it was. We learned a lot about exactly what is our ideal vessel, how to orient the ship in relation to the wind and in relation to the motion of the ship while we're trying to fly the balloon. So if you orient the balloon into the wind, um, you can actually make the tether more vertical, which is really what you want to achieve the maximum flight altitude. I think now we definitely have a better idea of exactly what boat we want and where we would want to operate. I think it was definitely successful. You know, we, we learned a lot. We, we did everything we wanted to do. Um, and, you know, I think we definitely identified some unique applications for tethered balloons from ships that we can pursue in the future.